Hello and welcome to the lovely Leo 2023 horoscope. I'm Rose Smith from AbsoluteSoulSecrets.com. Thank you so much for joining me uh, today. We're going to have a deep dive into your uh, horoscope and I'll also pick two cards as theme cards for the year. Uh, because I find they work in very well with the horoscope. If you are new here, please consider subscribing to the channel and hit that no notification bell right now. Okay, so here's our horoscope, but let's do the cards first and see uh, what comes out for lovely Leo in 2023. Okay, this is quite good. I see uh, to the right here a ladder going up and uh, somebody climbing up. It's a woman actually. So if you are a guy watching this, this is the feminine energy uh, that you have. Okay, it's all about being receptive and um, being basically. So yeah, don't get too caught up in doing too much. Uh, and pushing yourself uh, in 2023. That's for everyone, by the way. Okay, so this suggests that your, uh, your frequency, your vibration is increasing, you're evolving spiritually. Okay, so I also get, I'm watching, there's a lot of green in this picture that I can see, and you go up to a certain level, then you stop and have a break uh, and a little rest, and then you go up again in the second half of the year. So it might be that mid-year there's sort of, it might seem spiritually that there's not a lot happening. But let's see what card comes out. Ah, okay, Queen of Pentacles. Well, this is interesting because this is obviously about your finances and perhaps your physical body to a lesser extent. Uh, so a feminine energy here. And it could be as you evolve spiritually, you also evolve materially. These things don't have to, these two elements don't have to be uh, in opposition as we've been taught, you know, in the old days. Uh, it was always about, well, you know, if you've got money, you can't be spiritual. If, you've got, if you're spiritual, you can't have money. And, and that's actually quite false. Uh, and so with, you know, taking the appropriate action, uh, this is somebody who's very astute. Uh, often she works from home. Uh, so, uh, and because it just makes sense, you know, in many cases, uh, you're not wasting your energy commuting or getting ready to go to work or and stuff like that because you're in your track pants when you answer the phone. Uh, but she does very well. Uh, there's a lot of gold here. There's a gold throne. She has her feet on the ground. This is all about being practical and down to earth uh, while making a very good and substantial living okay so your finances could improve in the first half of the year lovely leo all right let's have a look now uh, at the second half what do i see i get the color purple coming in from the right side again it might be the things on the right are more the masculine way of being and it might be through logical thought and um thinking very carefully uh, that your spirituality uh, improves in some way or uh, increases and like I said before these things are not opposite like we've been taught okay so the card that comes out uh, is the knight of wands now not going too quickly not racing into things at 100 miles an hour uh, this energy is all about the fiery motivational uh, spiritual energy that we can actually uh, feel sometimes it's a creative force there's a lot of growth see the uh, green leaves here and action and you see these um, pyramids in the background sometimes can indicate travel but not always but uh, this is certainly somebody who's willing to give the unknown a bit of a try this is someone who's adventurous who will go out into the unknown and try new things um, sometimes it does suggest a change in residence but only if there's other supporting factors it's not a strong it's not a strong energy here it's about being adventurous in spirit and adventurous in creativity okay so that's excellent for the second half of the year there we go. All right, let's make this a bit bigger so we can all see it. 
and uh, you can see there is a lot happening okay lovely Leo the first thing I want to talk about is this small little triangle here called an eagle eye pattern and it's involving uh, Saturn uh, Neptune and Mercury here the focal point is Saturn okay and Saturn will be shifting uh, in March uh, March 7th I think it is I'll come to that in a moment uh, and this triangle won't exist but how we start the year off I often think is like a, a template uh, and um, speaking of which um, you'll see these red circles this relates to all of the planets that are retrograde uh, at the beginning of the year and through January they gradually turn direct and they're giving us more and more energy so how the year starts and right through January sort of sets the year up as a template. So you're starting with this focal point in Saturn here in your seventh house, which is all about your important and committed relationships with other people. Sometimes legalities uh, can be involved with this house or people that you don't get on very well with in the old literature, or they were called open enemies. But I don't like the word enemy, but it's just people you know that you don't get on with and you're well aware of what the dynamics are there. But this is wonderful, this pattern, because it brings a spiritual intuition uh, into your uh, important relationships, like the energies are blending between Mercury communications, especially in your everyday uh, life and the patterns of communication you have and your brilliant ideas that you can have lovely Leo and also Neptune the really spiritual force as well but we do have to be careful sometimes that we don't fall into delusion or illusion uh, but all of these energies combining uh, around your important relationships and you might choose to put some structure in okay even though it's Saturn can uh, represent restriction or limitation or maybe authority um, you know women marry their fathers and men marry their mothers uh, and there's lots of psychological reasons for that sometimes the partner becomes like an authority figure and um, so Saturn that Saturn can uh, be representing that authority um, but sometimes it's self-imposed restriction uh, so it might be that we put structure into our relationships and then we make you know we revisit our relationship and make some new rules okay but this gives you the intuition and the insight and I guess the um, uh, ability uh, to really get down to what the core matter is in your important relationships okay so that's why it's called eagle eye because you see beneath the surface so that's a really good way to start the year uh, now I want to talk about Jupiter uh, and uh, Chiron Jupiter uh, is here in Aries it will be going into Taurus I'll talk about that in a moment but um, Chiron is here at 11 degrees and uh, it's important because they're going to, Jupiter's going to catch up to Chiron. Uh, that's the 24th of February to the 5th of March. And this could bring up some issues for healing. It's ultimately a healing force because it's Jupiter conjunct Chiron. Uh, and so this is really going to increase uh, your ability to uh, see what spiritual wounds you have in regard to growing your life if you want to grow your life and you can't you maybe you want to go overseas maybe you want to study maybe you're interested in spirituality but there's something holding you back um, or philosophy even uh, why, different ways that you can broaden your life you know through your connections with people from other countries uh, or cultures uh, or even um, lovers in other countries and things like that uh, when Jupiter conjuncts Chiron you're going to be very strongly made aware of what the issues are and they'll come up and they may be uncomfortable at first but of course what will happen you know they're uncomfortable at first but then a healing takes place so that's really important to consider uh, Saturn will be going into Pisces from the 7th of March to the 24th of 
May 2025. Okay, so moving from the restrictions around relationships into intimacy and joint um, assets that you share with other people. That can include things like taxation, uh, loans that you share with banks, for example, um, or you know any debts to that you may have. Uh, it can be superannuational 401k if you're in the US. Uh, and so these things that you share with other people, including intimacy, there are some restrictions there. Maybe you want to go for a loan, but you can't get the loan that you want or at the rate that you want it. Uh, because especially now with interest rates going up, uh, and they will continue to go up through uh, 2023 as well. We've had eight interest rate rises in Australia. I did cover this um, the other day when I did the 2023 World Predictions video, so you might want to look at that. Uh, but there was some definite uh, standout months, which were March and July, regarding interest rates, okay? So interest rates, if you're going for a loan, you really need to factor those extra rate rises in to what you can pay. Uh, so there's some sort of restriction there. So I would say do your homework early and do your uh, homework very fastidiously uh, because you need extra, you're going to need extra money there if you want a loan. Uh, okay, so Saturn in Pisces, they're not really, they don't really go together. Um, Saturn's probably not at home there, but look, it could be a lot worse. Like Saturn in um, Capricorn would be, yeah, yuck. <laughs> it would be <laughs> when it was back here. Um, this a uh, couple of years ago, yeah, this would have been um, quite difficult because it's all about the rules. It's all about following what other people tell you. But, but here in Pisces, there's more flow. And so you can probably work your way around uh, things. You can probably find an out or a loophole. Uh, and so even though Saturn's not happy there, uh, it makes it a little bit easier, I feel, uh, for us when uh, we have to um, yeah, deal with it. And I say us because I have a Leo moon. So if, you, uh, if you're Leo rising uh, or you have a Leo moon, uh, yeah, watch this because it still applies. Okay, the other thing, Pluto is going into Aquarius on the 23rd of March until the 11th of June. And then it'll go back to Aquarius here. Uh, so it'll be going into, uh, sorry, back to Capricorn here. It'll be going into Aquarius, then coming back uh, and then it'll be going back to Aquarius on the 31st of January 2024 until, sorry, 31st of January 2024 until 2044. 20 years it's going to be in Aquarius. This is really huge because we're going to get a little taster or a sample of what this energy is going to feel like uh, this year. Uh, and... Um, you know, it's just laying the, the, the groundwork, so to speak. Uh, and uh, so that will be for nearly three months. And then it goes back to Capricorn and we can feel the hard edges there and the rules and, and, and those sorts of things. But um, this brings a, a, a very much a humanitarian type of energy. Uh, and for you, uh, this is going to be beneficial in your relationships uh, with important or significant others so your husband your wife your girlfriend like if you're a serious girlfriend or boyfriend uh, or maybe even your business partners uh, Pluto is often about um, um, birth death and rebirth so you might find that an old partner comes back or if you're in an existing relationship like an established relationship something comes back from when you first started going out together the energy maybe it's rejuvenated or um, you both feel younger or something so this might happen particularly if you're in your say 40s or 50s and you've had some children you know bought a house um, did all the life type cycles the developmental stages we go through and then you've got some free time on your hands because the kids have left home uh, and you might find your relationship changes for the better and there's more freedom in your relationship. 
Uh, Aquarius loves freedom. Aquarius doesn't want to feel tied down in a relationship. Uh, and so it could change, but there's more freedom uh, in that. So the relationship improves, for example. So that's, that's uh, pretty important. Uh, then we have Jupiter in Taurus uh, from the 16th of May to the 25th of May 2024. So for just over two years, uh, Jupiter will move from Aries into Taurus here. This is going to really grow your career prospects and your reputation or your status. It's like your rep reputation could precede you. People have already heard about you if you if you have a career and you go, maybe you'll decide you want a new job and you'll go in and they will have all these ideas about you because they've already heard about you. Uh, if you don't have a career, sometimes this is just your um, social status or um, it can be to do with a particular parent. Traditionally, it was thought to be the mother. Okay, so there could be some sort of um, improvement. Uh, we just say parents these days. Astrolog astrologers generally say parents. But yeah, traditionally, it was the mother figure. But you might find a definite improvement with one or both of your parents. Uh, so, yeah, but that's really um, quite positive. And there's going, because it's Taurus, it's a fixed sign. So there's likely to be some uh, real concrete manifestation to that energy. It's not just about emotionally improving a relationship or your, or your career. It's about all of the physical things that come uh, with that. Uh, the other point to note is uh, Venus, the planet of love, is in your sign uh, and it will be retrograde from 22nd of um, July to the 3rd of September. Uh, this is probably important for you because uh, uh, this first house is all about how you present yourself to the world and Venus there may give you a new appreciation of beauty. So you could change your appearance in some way or become more cognizant of colour or style. Maybe you want to change your hair. And you, maybe you want to make, wear makeup or something like that. Uh, but beauty is definitely more important to you. You could also have a more calm or peaceful demeanour uh, or aura about you. So when you meet people, they sort of take note how peaceful and content that you seem. Uh, so that's fairly important. It's sort of a bit magnetic in a sense that, you know, people notice that and then they're paying attention to that. Uh, we have four eclipses, which is quite usual. Uh, solar eclipse on the 20th of April in Aries. A lunar eclipse, uh, and I'll just talk really quickly about that. Uh, so there it is there in Aries, bring a lot of spont spontaneity and action and new beginnings around growing your life here um, the house of the higher mind maybe study is important or philosophy or spirituality uh, then we have a lunar eclipse uh, in uh, scorpio on the 6th of may uh, tumbling things up a bit um, causing a bit of turbulence or a few waves in your home and family zone uh, so do watch for that i'll have more videos on these later as we get closer uh, but yeah basically lunar eclipses are quite often um, like um, turbulent emotions coming up uh, dredging the subconscious so you might feel it but it mightn't have any actual physical um, uh, correlate uh, that goes with that it might just be how you feel uh, and um, then there's a solar eclipse in Libra here on the 14th of October affecting your communications and your ideas maybe your study you're thinking about studying or doing a new course or something like that there could be new beginnings in your neighborhood or to do with your neighbors maybe they're doing something and then you have to listen to the noise <laughs> For a while but think of it this way if they are renovating and making noise it's going to improve the value of their property and that's going to have a little bit of a spin-off onto your property so think of it that way find the silver lining and a lunar eclipse in Taurus on the 28th of October uh, bringing an, again another shake-up uh, to your career 
or maybe with your uh, parents or a parent or your reputation. So if you haven't changed jobs and got closer to what your heart desires by the 28th of October, around that date, give or take a few months either side, uh, you could really be thinking about a new career, you know, and, um, you know, that could be exciting. Um, we have Mercury retrograde uh, beginning the year, so that's a bit of a template. Uh, so the thing with um, Mercury retrograde is sometimes it causes misunderstandings. Uh, it, you know, there's also issues with technology and there's issues with travel, so bear that in mind. Uh, the 21st of April is the first one. Normally uh, Mercury retrograde goes for about three weeks and then there's a couple of weeks on either side of these dates uh, where the energy is coming on or going off. Uh, it's retrograde again the 23rd of August in Virgo, uh, an Earth sign. All These are all Earth signs by the way. Uh, and then the 12th of December in uh, Capricorn and Sagittarius. Sagittarius, of course, is a fire sign uh, like you. So you'll be particularly affected by that last one. Um, uh, well, it's a fire sign. Elements, you know, maybe a bit. Uh, anyway, so that's it, lovely Leos. Uh, you know, there's a lot happening, but if I have to s sum it up, I'd say that we're trending upwards now. I think we've really sort of hit the bottom and that um, now what's going to happen is, you know, there's signs here with Pluto going into Aquarius and Saturn going into Pisces. There's signs that things are going to, you know, have a, a silver lining, a bit of an upside. So although it's no walk in the park, it never is, uh, you know, we've still got the Ukraine war that is going to go right through 2023, I believe. That's what I got in a flash into 2024. Uh, and the interest rate rises. There's also some very hopeful signs. So, and you uh, could do financially a bit better this year than what you have in the past. And travel may be on your agenda. Okay, so... That's it. I hope this is useful for you. Thanks so much for watching today. I really appreciate that. Just want to wish you a Merry Christmas if you celebrate Christmas and uh, all of the um, prosperous energy and abundance that you can muster up for 2023. And just imagine it's all raining down on you now like gold glitter. Okay, I'll see you all again soon. Thanks and bye for now. Thanks so much for watching. Please visit my website absolutesoulsecrets.com for all things spiritual. Have a lovely day.